I'm Bob Weeks. Kansas school leaders are proud of Kansas schools, partly because of scores on the National Assessment of Educational Progress Test, or NAEP. Kansas ranks pretty high among the states on this test. NAEP is a test that's controlled by the federal government and is the same in all states. Data for the 2013 administration of the test was just released. I've gathered scores and made them available in a visualization that you can use at wichitaliberty.org. The most widely available NAEP data is for two subjects, reading and math, and for two grades, four and eight. Here's data for Kansas, Texas, and the average for national public schools. I choose to compare Kansas with Texas because for several reasons, Kansas has been comparing itself with Texas. So let's look at these test scores and see if the reality matches what Kansas school leaders have said. This is the data for the past five administrations of NAEP. Looking at this with Kansas in blue, Texas in green, and national public schools in yellow, you can see why Kansas school leaders are proud of Kansas. The blue line representing Kansas is almost always the highest. NAEP also makes data available by ethnic subtypes. Here's the same chart, but this time showing black students only. Do you see something different? Now Texas is higher than Kansas in all cases but one where there is a tie. Here's the same chart again, but showing Hispanic students only. Texas is higher in some cases, and Kansas and Texas are virtually tied in two others. Note that national public schools is higher than Kansas in some cases. Finally, here's the same chart, but showing white students only. Texas is higher than Kansas in three of four cases, and in some cases, the national public school average beats or ties Kansas. So we have what seems to be four contradictory statements, but each in fact is true. That is, when considering all students, Kansas scores higher than Texas. When looking at Hispanic students only, Kansas is roughly equal to Texas. Looking at black students only, Kansas is scores less than Texas. And when looking at white students only, Kansas scores less than Texas in most cases. How can this be? Well, the answer is something called Simpson's Paradox, which shows that aggregated data can appear to reverse important trends in the numbers being combined. In more detail, it's a paradox in which a trend that appears in different groups of data disappears when these groups are combined, and the reverse trend appears for the aggregate data. And many statisticians believe that the mainstream public should be informed of the counterintuitive results in statistics such as Simpson's Paradox. In this case, the confounding factor, or lurking variable, is that the two states differ greatly in the proportion of students in various ethnic groups. For example, in Kansas, about 69% of the students are white. In Texas, it's 33%. This large difference in the composition of students is what makes it look like Kansas students perform better on the NAEP test than Texas students. But looking at the scores for ethnic subgroups, which state would you say has the most desirable set of NAEP scores? It's important to know that aggregated data can mask or hide underlying trends. And here's a question I have for you. Have you heard Kansas school leaders talk about this? Or do they talk only about the aggregated data? I'm Bob Weeks. For more on this and other topics, see The Voice for Liberty at wichitaliberty.org. You can also see us on Facebook and on YouTube for more videos like this.